All right, this is upside down, so I'm going to fix that for you all. Sure. Don't mind me as I adjust. If anyone is out there, let me know if you can hear me. I'm using a webcam type setup that I've never used and I don't know if y'all can hear me. So let me know if anyone can hear me. Um, leave me a chat and let me know if y'all can hear me. If y'all are out there and you can hear me, let me know. Okay, good. Thank you, Antonia. Thank you, Beverly. That helps because I'm using this new webcam and I've never used it before and I wanna make sure you all can hear me. And I thought today would be a good day to do a live video because one, I wanna try out this new camera and also, I have a specific thing that I want to do with this painting. And this is my Diana painting. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Alice. I appreciate that. Um, Y'all, let me know if you have any questions as I paint. Um, What I want to do with you all is show you how I do a glaze over the background. And in fact, this is a little light. Let me see if I can fix the exposure on this. Okay, that's going to be more accurate to the painting. Let's see if I go a little darker even. I want you all to be able to see the glaze I want to put on because I want to put Hi, Sweden. How fun is that? Sweden is gorgeous. Lucky you. <laughs> um, I want to be able to show you guys a very delicate glaze that I'm going to put with cerulean blue uh, over this area to bring this cat forward. Um, and this has gotten to be a busy painting. So I want to work on that too. We'll see how far we get. And um, I'm juggling a lot of things because I'm also going to be recording this for my Patreon students. If y'all are on my online students uh, as either a member of YouTube or Patreon or whatever, you've been watching me paint this. And I'm wanting to make a painting for women in watercolor competition. So I've been doing my most advanced techniques on this painting. I've done a lot of experimentation. And it's been a lot of fun. I've used my beloved Lamp Black. If any of you know what I mean by that, if you follow me, you know how I love to play with Lamp Black. Um, let's see, where can I put my paint where it will be out of the way, but y'all can see it. I'm going to use Cerulean. Um, all right, so I'm going to use my Windsor and Newton Cerulean. If y'all, I don't know if you guys watch my shorts, but I make a lot of shorts about little experiments I do and little bits of knowledge that I learn and things I want to pass on to you. And I did a little um, comparison of Windsor and Newton Cerulean to Daniel Smith Cerulean. And my conclusion was I definitely like Windsor and Newton Cerulean better. It, I like how it flakes out better. And I like the color of it better. So um, let's clean this off a little. All 
right. Let's see. I want to get it somewhere where y'all can see what I'm doing. And all right. So I'm going to take a pretty soft brush. I'll probably take this uh, three quarter oval. And it's a silver black velvet. Do any of y'all like silver black velvets? Um, it's my favorite, favorite, um, favorite set of brushes that I have is my silver black velvets. And I'm just going to get it really wet. And maybe pull up my... reference here. All right, so if y'all haven't seen my reference yet, that's my reference of Diana. Diana is a cat that I have outside and she's adopted me, which I really enjoy having her and I wish I could bring her inside, but I've brought another cat that adopted me from outside inside, Flurkin. All right, so I'm just activating this cerulean blue. I'm going to get it really watery. All right, and cerulean is really nice. To work with. It's a really delicate color and it dries really light. Yes, Beverly, I love silver black velvet too. I'm a big fan and you know what else I love? And I recently did this in uh, my online tutorial and I did it in a, um, oh no, I didn't do it in a short, but y'all, I've got this big video I'm working on. I'm thinking about going to a different format where I just do maybe one or two long videos a month, but I make them really good. And one of the ones that I'm going to um, do is advanced techniques and show how I use this brush, a calligraphy brush. These are so cheap and they're natural hair. So I get such beautiful brush marks with these. And I did a lot of her coat with that and sprayed it first and then used this to kind of pat on color. I can't wait to share that with you. I'm editing that video this week and probably next week. It takes me a couple weeks to edit those long videos. Okay, so I'm just getting plenty of watery cerulean going. <laughs> Beverly, yes. <laughs> well, actually I have four now because I have three that I feed outside and one inside and that's about all the chaos I can take, but I love them. I love those kitties. All right, so this cat is merging too much with this background. This background is really busy. We want it about to be about the cat. So I've got my watery cerulean. This is all perfectly dry and set. So I'm just gonna kind of delicately go in and pat in this cerulean blue. All right, so uh, does anyone do this? Do the, uh, does anyone use a glaze of blue quite often to push their background back? Or is this new information? Y'all tell me if you do this. <laughs> yeah, Beverly, four is too many in my very busy household. And my cat Flurkin has not been friendly in the past to my other cats. So um, it would take a lot of training and time to get it to a friendly atmosphere in the house and that's a lot for me so but Flurkin's the star of the show and he wants to keep it that way all right so anyway this cerulean is such a pretty color and I don't have it on my palette in any regular way but do you see how that automatically just pushed this background back and now the cat is popping forward more. Do you see? I don't know if you can see that on my live cam very well. 
but it really pushes all this busyness back. And I'm just gonna put it all around this cat. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Book Lover, that helps me new for you. Okay, good. I've got some really great shorts showing me, showing how I do this. Um, the short that I have showing a dog with his mouth open, uh, I used this technique to, his, his mouth was really busy and full of teeth in this short that is on my channel now. You can go check it out. And his mouth was hanging wide open with all these teeth. He's got this crazy mouthful of teeth that's really busy and it took away from the painting because it was so busy. And so um, I put a glaze over his mouth and it really helped calm that down. All right, now I want you to notice something. Okay, I've got this cerulean blue, I'm patting it on. And in order for the cat not to look like a cutout, do you see how I found an opportunity in the reference where there's a little bit more shadow because this part of the um, chest is in a little bit of a shadow because this ruff is poofing out. And I use that as an opportunity to connect what I'm doing here um, into the painting. And I'm gonna carry that right on through to um, uh, different parts of the cat that are also in shadow where I can create uh, pathways of connection. So I can do that through here and also through this back foot, through this foot that's in shadow, and then through here, through this leg, um, and also the underside of the leg. So I'm, I'm creating this pathway that I'm not just sticking it on the background and making this look too much of a cutout. Um, that way it doesn't look like a cutout. So you don't want to just put your background color just in the background. You want to find opportunities. And also I'm going to splash some. Um, just to give it some liveliness. And then put some blue on the underside of where the underside of the fur would be to kind of tie this blue in because you don't want blue here and no blue on the cat. All right, now I need to move this. You guys have seen though, I think you've seen enough of my palette and what I'm doing. I'm just using tea consistency. Tea consistency is when you add so much water to your paint that when you tip your palette, it drips and I'm getting a lot of glare, um, but see how drippy that is. It's just really flowing around my palette. That's because I've added so much water to my paint that it's tea consistency. That means it's got a lot of water and I've got so many videos about that. If you guys go watch my fur series, um, Beverly, I do glaze a lot and it's usually really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the Winter Newton version so much. I really do. My cat's going nuts. All right, so um, just to add liveliness, I do a little few drops and pick up any that have dropped. You guys, another thing that's really cool about this tutorial, I was painting these eyes and then this eye was way smaller than this one. So what I did was I took a picture of this painting. I put it in Photoshop. I lightened it so I could see the real picture underneath it. So I had layered it over the real picture in Photoshop and um, I could see that the eye I was thinking it wasn't tall enough, but it wasn't wide enough. So I did major reconstruct reconstructive surgery on this eye. So that's another fun thing that you'll see me do in this um, tutorial. Oh my goodness. I am like totally splashing on my iPad right now.
Ah, uh, yes. M I don't know if I'm saying it, Mamera Blue paint. That's a pretty paint. That's a really good paint. I never use it, but um, I think it's a really good paint. All right. And then I'm going to pat on. And putting a, a glaze of this cerulean blue um, throughout the painting will also just help kind of tie it all together. Um, this painting got really busy really fast. Another thing I can show you all is let me see where am I? All right, I've got a lot of different brushes that I use for scrubbing. And this is a soft scrubber by um, Royal and Langnickel, but you can also use just a kind of a soft acrylic painting brush that's stiffer than a watercolor brush to scrub. And this is a good time when everything's really wet to go in and just kind of soften some edges if you want. Take some of this off. Um, like this stuff back in here, it doesn't need to be so. Um, A little strong. I'm also going to get some milk consistency cerulean blue and kind of pat it over this area because I'm not crazy about the green that I got in this area. So I'm using it a little bit thicker in these areas that have this kind of forest green that I just don't think matches very well the rest of the painting. So I'm kind of putting it on thicker, almost really cr cream consistency. I just don't like that particular green that I got. Oh, here's another place to show. Um, these got a little bit um, literal. So let's scrub a little bit of these edges in here. All right. So that'll be interesting to see how all this dries um, and see if it accomplishes what I want it to, which is to push all this back. Maybe these are, maybe this is, um, you know, shadows from this, this stuff in the pot. So that's an interesting little texture there. All right. So that is how you do a glaze to push an area back. So now this cat's coming forward a lot more. And I really like that. Um, one of the things that we can do is put a little bit of a dot of um, cerulean blue in the eye to kind of tie that together. And then I think we just let that dry. Um, maybe put a few drops of clear, clean water just to keep everything loosened up. And that is what I wanted to show you today. And I will put a picture of this up on my community tab on YouTube and I'll put it on my other social media for those of you who follow me on Facebook. Let me get caught up on the comments. Um, yes, okay, Miss message. All right, I think that answers any questions that you guys have put up. To me, his right back foot disappears. His right back, you mean, uh, yeah, this one, 
yeah, I'll have to go back in and I'll put a darker shadow under that and pop it back out. And also I'm getting some very strange, I mean, my painting looks so different than what you're seeing on your screen, at least my screen. Uh, I really am losing a lot of color and value variety from just the quality of my camera. So I will show a picture of this on my community tab and Facebook and, you know, all my other little social media where you guys follow me. Yeah, I see what you mean. But yeah, that I in the reference that that foot really recedes because it's in a dark shadow because it's under the cat. So some of that I'll leave, but I definitely want it to be more apparent than it is right now. So that's just another thing to adjust as I finish this painting, which I would say this is about 80% done. Thank you, Kaylani. Kaylani, thank you. Um, it's been really fun to talk to you guys. I love it. I love doing these live chats. They're kind of nerve wracking because it's a lot of pressure, but um, it's just a lot of fun. And I started this painting because I want to um, create a new painting to enter in the women in watercolor. Hi, oh, hey, Ohio. Um, I like your handle, Zenful Painter. I have a travel. I used to love to travel. I still love to travel a lot, but now I have a family. But I have a YouTube channel that's very much inactive that's called Travel for Zen. I love that name. So I love I love Zenful Painter. That's nice. Um, have you ever Zenful Painter? Have you read the book uh, The Tao of Watercolor? She's got a lot of uh, ideas and philosophies from Asian philosophy, kind of sprinkled throughout that book. It's a really interesting subject, almost like a religion. Only it's watercolor, and it's um, yeah, it's a good book, The Tao of Watercolor. And, and uh, I talked about it a lot in my thumbprint video that I did about one or two months ago. <laughs> Lots of Ohio people. Yay. Um, what else can I tell you all? Anyway, I was painting this for women in watercolor and it is officially changed from painting to this is a study and I'm just trying out ideas. And, you know, this is a complicated painting. So um, when you have as many elements as you do as this painting, probably you're going to need to do a study. And I want to calm down. I, I was playing with my lamp black. You guys know how I obsess over lamp, lamp black. But I think I got a little heavy handed with the lamp black. And her coat doesn't look as delicate even as it does in real life. She's just gorgeous. Her coat is just absolutely gorgeous. So, I don't know. I might do this again, or I might try another image for another painting, but I love how her face looks and her eyes. So anyway, all right, I'm going to go. Thank you guys so much for keeping me company while I demonstrated how to do a glaze over the background to push the background back and bring the subject forward. The fact that she has a lot of warm oranges in her coat helps bring her forward. So that helps with this composition. And you will, you guys be sure to check out my community tab later today. I'll put it up and you'll see how very different this looks um, with a proper photograph than this webcam I'm using. All right. Thanks so much, y'all. Now go watercolor your world. Bye, everybody.